Abraham Lincoln, he got shot in the head. Crazy. <laughs> What is up, watch fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theorem's Watch Watchup. I'm Michael Robert Christie. You want me to tell my address? You know the name Robert? Yes, sir. No, I didn't know that. Uh, today's video, uh, we're going to talk about a bunch of watch things, uh, uh, is sponsored by our friends over at Whatnot. We, we are... Be- we're, 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 going we're going live. live. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be going live on the WhatNot app this Wednesday at 5 p.m. So yes. we're going to be answering all of your questions. So any questions you do have, comment down below yes. and, uh, and and download the WhatNot app if you haven't already um, to uh, to talk to us and to hang out. And, and Much all more casual. We'll sit outside on the steps. We'll chit chat. We'll or chit chat. Yeah, with giveaways, whatever. You're doing giveaways, bunch of stuff. Talk more about that later. But um, yeah, see so you guys on WhatNot on Wednesday at 5. See you then and there. All right. So what, uh, what are we talking about today, Big Mike? Today we're talking about, well, we'll start a new segment, famous people and their watches. We're starting early, but we'll get more modern as time goes on. Then Breitling released a new Super Ocean. So we're talking about that because it's an interesting watch. I want to get your thoughts. But also, after reading a lot of comments and discussions, there are two watch brands that basically did it first and debatably did it better. So a lot of people were kind of upset about the price that Breitling is asking for the new watch. So we'll be getting into that. And then finally, tying all that up with there's something, and I'll kind of explain it too. There's something watch brands can learn from the way Rolex releases their watches. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Anytime. I mean, if you ever need any advice. I'm reporting for duty, Captain fucking obvious. I mean, I pay you for that? Are you kidding me? Dude, look at the views and then go back to when I didn't work here. I'm sorry. I'm so busy looking at the subscribers that have been stuck for a year. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, I love we, get, we don't get along. Uh, we really should hire another person, though. That's, oh, yeah. I was talking to Sally about it today. Uh, we really Dude, do. we can't we really hire Sally. Need, we, no, no, God. I, I, I love I'd my be girlfriend. I'd be a job in a week. I love my girlfriend. I wish that she just had more skills that were, that were not more skills. She has plenty of skills. Applicable for teenagers. Applicable for teenagers, because I really would hire her, but yeah. she has zero skills that would work for this company. Zero. Just one day she's sitting here for live. She's like, oh, you guys are dumb. Wait. <laughs> I'm like, why are you sitting so close to my Dummy alert. <laughs> I'm, I'm, this is weird. <laughs> Babe, I got you this gift. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Ha! Michael, pick that out. You like him. You like him. I don't. It's a gold uh, necklace. For real though, if you guys, uh, if any of you guys out there like either want part-time or full-time work, uh, th- listen, th- don't just fucking spam me with your, with your fucking resumes, which is what you guys always do. We are very specifically looking for someone that is proficient, proficient, not even a genius, but proficient in video editing. Yes. Okay. Uh, not, not necessarily large, large production, not the big films to start. We're happy to get you to work there, work to that, but proficient in video editing. Uh, uh, and uh, you know artistic video editing, yep. and um, and then some then some you know everyday stuff like social media stuff like like uh, uh, you know like, like posting uh, Instagram lives videos, and Instagram lives. videos and like that. It's not a tremendously difficult job, um, but it is a job. And whether it's part time or full time, we definitely I, I just have to I just have to hire more people because if you're in the uh, area, also massive plus. Uh, if you yes, if you are in the greater New York area, New Jersey area, then yes, massive, massive plus. Um, particularly, I mean, it's a good job for anyone on a part-time level, but it'd be a really great job for a young guy. Um, a, re- a really great job for a young guy that is like in, it's local to New Jersey. That's good at video editing. Um, oh yeah, like you know, young guy that wants a great job where he kind of gets a little bit famous in an industry. It'd be like amazing. Yep, agreed. Yeah, I just did the apply. Thing, the, 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 again, we're just talking about I'm hiring people now. We could put this whenever, but you know, like the like the big thing is like like you know, there are a ton of things that 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 are that take us that take skill to do right. like, and are worth doing, but. It, I can't. Well, there's not enough time. First of all, it's, yeah. it's fundamental. Yeah. But then on another level, we end up not doing them because they would be a, kind of a waste of Michael's time to do. Because Michael works at this point only really on our big projects, True. exclusively. Yeah. Um, whether it's shooting or editing, Michael is dead focused on our on our larger projects. Which is why a lot of other things that should be priorities in theory um, aren't. Because I know that yeah. to waste Michael's time by keeping the other rest of the other things up would be a waste of Michael's time. <laughs> all right to spend Michael's time that way would be to waste Michael's well, time. So we created, well, this is why we need someone, so please apply if you can step up. But we talk about it all the time where it's just like, yeah, we can make fantastic watch reviews. When? Oh, yeah, exactly. You know? I, I, absolutely. Absolutely. So, and you guys, could, if you guys wanted to be, you could even be in videos and stuff like that. Be, oh, the, yeah. be a host of a thing. As long as you were good and personable and the audience liked you, I would love that. Yeah, um, so, anyway, Michael, uh, Michael and I, uh, we need some help. We need some help. Yep. 
So. Uh, uh, please. <laughs> please. Welcome to the historic watch segment. The plan is, I, it doesn't matter when they're from, as long as obviously clocks have been around, but we'll show off the watch and then tell a few fun facts about it. Just because there's always so, with famous people, there's always so many like little weird things. Like Abraham Lincoln's pocket watch, mm. you have two inscriptions in it that are, well, one of them is very anti-Abraham Lincoln. And okay. he carried it around with him until the day he died. He carried around a quote that was against him? Yeah, he had no idea. It was inside his watch. Get the f*** out. Yeah, That's okay. Fun. So this is uh, uh, an English gold watch that was purchased in the 1850s from George Chatterton, a Springfield, Illinois jeweler. Lincoln obviously was humble, humble Abe, mm -hmm. but this was his splurge purchase because, you know, he did have money. He was a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So this is the big fancy purchase, but it was always like close to him. Obviously, it's very, very important. Also, a very, very accurate watch, they said, within a few seconds a day. So obviously not wow. cost certified, but yeah. Lincoln was on time. Wow. Just as news reached Washington that the Confederate forces had fired on Fort Sumter on April 12, 1861, watchmaker Jonathan Dillon was preparing Abraham Lincoln's timepiece. Caught up in the moment, Dillon unscrewed the dial and engraved, April 13, 1861, Fort Sumter was attacked by the rebels on the above date, J. Dillon, April 13, 1861, Washington. And, thank God we have a government, John Dillon. I don't get it. In 1864, what, it's basically something's happening as he's repairing the oh, watch. Oh, okay. So he opens the watch. Oh, back. I thought you were saying that it was against him. Oh, that's this is the first. Quote. Oh, okay. Is first I was like, how is that anti? Basically, this guy this is repairing Abe's little watch and is like Whoa, scribbling on the back yeah, and closes yeah, yeah. it. Well, that's pretty cool. Abraham Lincoln, no idea. Whoa. Second one, 1864. A second watchmaker, L. E. Gross, signed his name. Also, at some point, this is not a. We don't know who. Some point, someone etched Jeff Davis inside the watch, either as a joke or as a statement of support for the Confederacy. Lincoln never knew about the message he carried in his watch. What? The inscription remained hidden behind the dial for over a century. What? After hearing from Jonathan Dillon's great-great-grandson, the museum removed the dial on March 10th, 2009, wow. to reveal what it said. Oh, it gives me wow. chills. That is amazing. That is crazy. And so it's like... That modernizes people from that era mm. so much. Like oh, okay. someone's scraping, like they basically yeah. screw you in the back of your watch yeah. and they give it back to you. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's, insane. that's very cool. I, I love watch inscriptions. I mean, obviously that's a very historical one. Oh, but I, yeah, yeah. I, I love them. I mean, you know, uh, you saw the one with the Cartier. If they can't take a joke. You ever see that? No. Uh, on the back of a Cartier tank. If they can't take a joke, I, I mean that's love amazing. That. Yeah, it's so. Uh, cool. I saw one guy etched into his gold sub who had bought a bunch of different gold subs and swapped them out and swapped them out and swapped them out. He wrote, uh, he wrote, um, uh, "Don't sell me, you bipolar bitch." <laughs> really? Yeah, like you know, it's just stuff like that. And then, and then. Texas oil, 1930 to 1980. It's like, okay, not as cool. Yeah. And then the most heartbreaking one. Ugh, love mom and dad. Yeah. Ugh, love pa. I hate oh that. Oh, my God. And then me. you talk, I when I was flipping watches, I remember talking to some people and mm. being like, are you sure you want to get rid of this? Like, oh, yeah. No, I go, what's wrong? Uh, well, right now, I have a Cartier tank in the, in the shop that, that has the inscription, love mom and dad on the back. I so, saw I, mean, it. I would wear that. Obviously, I do wear it all the time. It doesn't bother me an ounce. That being said, I would like in a way like I would love to make that Cartier my own and if I were to be if I were to get married and if I were to have a child I would give them that watch and kind of redeem yeah this watch in the world and it yeah. doesn't matter it's just an inscription and it doesn't matter but it matters to me you know uh, yeah. what I mean like oh yeah way. that's actually a beautiful yeah. full circle I'll tell you a quick story it's like story. giving an orphan and home you know like, <laughs> yeah. yeah well it's just like taking something and being like look it's it's not in vain yes you know I got a tank, again, when I was flipping watches, that said something on the back. It was like a, li a little love line that was like, always yours, forever and ever. And I messaged the woman, because she basically reached out to me about it on eBay, and she was like, I'm 90 years old, like, this is this, this is that. Like, I, you know, I hate to part with this watch. Mm. So I messaged her, and I was like, I have the watch. Are you sure? Like, I can see who this is from and everything. And she messaged me back, this was from my first husband, who I divorced. Ah, and she goes, I have since met someone else, and we danced the night away every night. Uh, like, enjoy the watch. And I was like, ah, oh, you never see something like that. That's like, great. That's sweet. That's great. Anyways, this is Helen Keller's watch. And this also, I think, would be, if you were around... I'm surprised Helen Sarah, Keller would have a watch. You see? This is why. This is a brilliant complication watch. But this is, if you were around during this era, you would... 
a hundred percent have the same watch. Okay. Because this is a watch where you should be able to see the time in the dark, but a smooth businessman who gave this to Helen Keller, John Hitz, mm -hmm. was very proud that he basically took the use of this to be a secret way to check time during meetings so he could leave. Mm. So see these little ridges on the yeah, side? I see that. That is indicates hours, whichever right. one is out. And then on the back, there's essentially it like pops a little hand. Out? Yeah. No way. So this guy that at meetings cool. would put his hand in his pocket and feel, feel what time. time it is. Oh, that leave. is brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I love that complication. And this is Helen Keller's watch. There's a story that she left it in a taxi and was so upset that she couldn't get it. She like posted all these wanted and got it back. But like wow. this was her like prized possession. Wow, what a beautiful watch. But it made me think of you immediately. <laughs> I love that. Every meeting just checking the time like that. Yeah, that is Miss Keller's watch. I love that. I, I, I love that. Before we get into our next conversation, which is which is a Brightly Super Ocean, and I yes. have you know, some tough opinions about this watch, and you know, we'll get into it. Yep. Uh, but first, I want to let you guys all know we'll be going live on Whatnot uh, this Wednesday at 5 p.m. So what does that mean? Uh, it basically means that Michael and I will sit yes. down uh, and and start to answer not only questions that you guys have commented down below on this video uh, about watches or about style, whatever you guys want to talk about, um, but we'll also be engaging with the comment section on the Whatnot app. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. the whole time, right? Yeah. So we we would go off on tangents. We're talking about talking about the watch industry as a business. Obviously, the watches themselves, vintage watches. You know, all the, all the shit. And, and honestly, yeah. today's Monday, so this is happening again on on Wednesday at five p.m. So download the app if you don't have it already, and you have to go into watches and and bookmark bookmark our show because yes. we're gonna have a blast. Everyone has a blast. We do giveaways, we do auctions. It's awesome hour it's an awesome hour yep but who knows what's gonna happen from now until then you know Honestly. in watches i mean something yeah. new could come up whether it's the brightling or, or who knows what's gonna come up between yeah. now and then yeah so well, i highly recommend it it's a blast um it's yeah just just great to talk to you guys and to answer your questions and to hang out so again download the whatnot app mm -hmm. if you don't already have it and go over and go over to the watch section and, and bookmark our show uh wednesday 5 p.m we're gonna have a blast so yep. uh submit your questions down below for starters yeah but yeah Great. Bang, bang, boom. See you guys on Whatnot. Yes, sir. This is the new Breitling Super Ocean, and you're familiar with Buckshot that you would put in the shotgun. Yeah. Buckshot, obviously, shoots a very yep. wide net yep. to hopefully hit a bird easier. Yep. This Breitling essentially put a round of Buckshot and shot it up. This watch is offered in 46, 44, 42, and 36, and you can get it in steel, steel gold, or bronze with different strap configurations for each. <laughs> at, at least they're uh, decisive. We want to get you to buy a watch from us. Yeah. So I, I don't think it's a bad looking watch. I especially like the white one, but some people were freaking what out. What the f is wrong with you? I knew this shit. and I said that as it's like, I should have kept that as an inside It's the thought. one of the weirdest Theo and Harris like things that goes on that you love these white watches. Yeah. And then people will tag me on just random white watch posts at like 3 in the morning. They're like, you buy it, huh? Thinking like, about you. <laughs> miss you. They call fact for a few different reasons. The design reason we'll talk about at the end, but obviously you can see very coloring dials, which is not new, which is not proprietary to these other brands, but the inspiration seems very closely related to two other brands that we'll talk about. But also it caught flack for, they use basically an ETA movement, which is decorated by Breitling, or, mm -hmm. you know, spruced up to some degree by Breitling. But people were upset with that, obviously, but they were more upset with the fact that it's still a 38 hour power reserve, mm -hmm. which now is incredibly low, especially when you look at Tudor with yeah, the 70. Yeah. And all of that with the ETA movement, for starting at $4,600 for the 36 millimeter, and I think the 46, or it can get up to, depending on the configuration, $6,700. Wow, that's interesting. That's a really wide. Yeah, that's a that's wide. Well, because you're price. introducing precious metals and different materials and well, different well, bronze. sizes. Well, bronze. I mean, bronze. Is oh, precious steel metal. and gold. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, the uh, the one on the left you've got here. That that's the big one. I, I assume that's the 46. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's kind of like a. You know, deep sea. That's kind of what they're going for, right? Like yep. the yep. it's like a DC uh, deep sea, except on uh, on an oyster flex. You know. Yep. Um, yeah, I I like the I like the forty two probably not for me. Definitely too big. Mm -hmm. A thirty nine or a forty would have been good, uh, which they can produce both if they want. A lot because, of because clearly they can do any case sizes. sizes. Yeah. That was a, so. sorry to interrupt. You. A lot of people said like 
you did 46, 42, 44, 36, not 40? Yeah. Why? It's weird. Yeah. It makes no sense. Or maybe it does make sense. Uh, it doesn't make sense R&D. to me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. You know, maybe market research told them that those size made, sizes made sense. Um, yeah, at $4,600 in ETA movement, obviously, this is no longer an Omega competitor. This is a Tudor competitor. So it's odd to me that Breitling is shooting is, is fighting down or swinging down uh yeah that's odd because breitling is not supposed to be a tutor competitor it's supposed to be an omega competitor right um that being said listen from what i've heard breitling has been crushing they've been growing their going their company their sales no are like over double or triple or something you know, maybe even more than that like wow. insane in the last year or year and a half wow. so what they're doing is probably right it's probably makes sense doesn't make sense to me yeah. um you know again maybe maybe if you want to sub you know, maybe this is just the affordable sub. And you know what's yeah. interesting? Think yeah. about it from that perspective. When I bring up these other two brands, you these other two brands are more famous for their loud colors. But if you go into a shop, you're more likely to go into a shop that carries Breitling and not these other two brands. Before we get into the alternatives to Breitling, yep. uh, I'm wearing I'm wearing a Rolex Explorer from the Theo and Harris watch shop. Oh, I love that Beautiful watch. Beautiful watch. But pull up the shop and I want to take a look at some of these watches. I want to talk about them for a second. You, you, the first one I, I want to talk about is, is a Calatrava that's there. Um, paddock Calatrava is just about as classic paddock as you can get, right? Yes. It's, it's so much so that other almost all other brands, as you said at the time, you know, Longines, whether it be Longines or a whole bunch of other brands, they they called their watches Calatrava, right? Because, it, it, colloquially, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because, because the paddock Calatrava just became just this icon of design you know it's this is yeah the perfect implementation of restraint it is it you is know? supreme elegance and obviously Patek Philippe name doesn't hurt yes, uh, ultra thin watch reference 3520d under ten thousand dollars solid 18 karat yellow gold Ridiculous. and the real big thing here is not only the fact that it comes on a on a Patek Philippe clasp which is fantastic yep. but also that hobnail bezel yep mwah, stunning uh, yep. that's the same bezel that we saw in Patek you know uh, up and down the line I mean starting at the college travel of course time only and yep. all the way up to perpetual calendars which which uh, that President uh, Bush wore his friend um, gave it to him for his birthday one year yep. same hobnail bezel that is a classic Patek Philippe design element oh yes um, I don't know call me you know call me aspiring call me whatever you want to call me but there is a very special feeling wearing a wearing a Patek Philippe that's true um, and it's not unfounded right these are supremely elegant watches they're, they're delicate and everything in design but they're not fragile yeah you can wear a Patek every single day yeah you know and yeah. I just I just love them it's gorgeous um, what's other watch that you find interesting here? Let's see. I mean, the big date. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, about? I mean, okay, the, okay, the, the, the big this Rolex big date. Yeah, I've been I've been buying and selling watches for five or no eight years, and mm-hmm. I've only ever seen these maybe three times max. A big date is there's honeycomb dials which are rare. There's roulette di- roulette dials which are rare. There's the red depth uh-huh. on oyster cases. Yeah. I put red depth being the rarest. Yeah. I put. Large logo Rolex yep. up there with red depth. Absolutely, and, and and the big difference for me with with a lot of these rare, or not, not quote unquote rare, but even objectively rare things, yep. is just because it's rare doesn't mean it's desirable or particularly interesting or beautiful. Yeah, or right. But th- this watch is exactly that, right? Yeah. Um, what, what we're basically seeing here is this is a Rolex from 1500 uh, on its original, you know, oyster bracelet and yep. immaculate silver dial, super broad dauphine hands, fantastic watch. Yes. Um, but what's really really special um, is, is if that. Didn't, that wasn't enough. It has this enormous logo, this abnormally large. Actually, logo. No, when you put it next to a regular oh, Rolex logo, Can't it is compare. enormous. Can't even compare. Yeah, uh, because this is just incredible. You're not going to see this again in the street. Um, you never see them. You're Look really at that not. dial. My yeah. God, it's gorgeous. With the Fuck. dagger indices. Oh, oh my God. God. Uh, whoever buys this watch is a very, very lucky person. They That's will. True categorically on one of the best Rolex 1500s out there, 100%. And for that matter, uh, it's not a date just, but one of the best Rolexes, you know, with date from their elegance line, meaning not Submariner. This is one of the best variations of Rolex, period, 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 and it's $6,000. Yeah, it's really, red depth is is one of my grails, obviously, on an Oyster Perpetual case, on on a a date or a date just or something like that. 
but the big logo is fantastic. fantastic That's stuff. right up there. Fantastic stuff. Okay, the last the last two watches I want to talk about are both Omega Seamasters. They're just very, very different Seamasters. Yes. We'll start off with, with the Seamaster Honeycomb. Okay. Yes. On very rare occasions, Omega manufactured Seamasters in these beautiful honeycomb textures, right? Yes. Rolex did the same thing. Again, very, very uncommon, very uncommon. Yes. What's even more uncommon is that you would find uh, this sort of watch, a honeycomb dial, actually now, with pink gold uh, indexes and, and hands. Yep. Incredibly rare. Usually Agreed. they're with steel, okay? Yes. Uh, and, and the pink gold just brings out this warm hue that's unmatched, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Even rarer still is to find one of these watches in great condition. Yes. And this watch is basically immaculate. Yep, agreed. An immaculate watch. This is a very special Omega Seamaster, okay? Uh, yeah. Again, available in the Theon Harris shop. Uh, now, the other watch here is an Omega Seamaster chronometer. Again, similar priced watch, not as distinctive in its in its design, right? It's not as it's not as bold. But uh, that being said, oh my God. Uh, this is a all star heavy hitter Omega. Okay, uh, at the time, um, uh, uh, the Omega Seamaster line was the more approachable. Uh, compared to more approachable rather than the Constellation. The yes. Constellation was the supremely accurate, you know, collection. You know, the Constellation was the chronometer series. Yes. Right. Mostly yes. with 500 series calories. Yes. Uh, and Omega decided, well, let's 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 try it. Let's let's give it a shot. Yeah. Very very rare occasions. Why would um, people want this more waterproof watch, but a chronometer? Like, is there a market? They're very exactly. experimental at this stage. So they put these incredibly accurate chronometer movements into Omega Seamasters, which were more durable watches than Constellations. Yep. Uh, and we've got one of these very, very rare examples here. Fantastic um, This watch dates watch. to the 1960s, 1968. Uh, again, all of these Omega Seamaster chronometers dated to the late 60s. This one's 68. Again, silver dial, um, uh, just fantastic steel case. Again, not as not as uh, details in its design to the other one, but frankly, you know, while I love the warmth and the honeycomb, I love that stuff, and it's objectively rare, but yep. this is maybe a little bit more for a modern palette. Um, you know, the, the rose gold and, the, and the, the, the honeycomb is a little bit elegant. So maybe it's a little bit more of that vintage era. Yep. This is, this is just, you're not, you're not getting a, you're really not getting better vintage Omegas than this. No. Uh, it's, they're unbelievable. Magnifier on the date, but yep. not a Cyclops. So it's lower key. Yeah. It's very subtle. Unbelievable. Fantastic stuff. wrist presence. I've always, I've, you know, I'm just so fascinated with history in general, um, and, and watch history certainly isn't an exception. Uh, you know, I, I just yeah. love what they were doing, like use the word experimentation. That's exactly it. These brands were experimenting at the time. Now we know them as, you know, the collections are the collections. Yeah, They're very figured out. You know, they know their price point, they know everything. Yeah. Then they were, they were, they were working with data, they were doing research, but the watch was first, not the market. There, yeah, there wasn't a there wasn't a moon swatch. There wasn't a dark side of the moon. Yeah. It was like uh, we put a better movement in the Seamaster series. Someone's gonna see buy how it. how many people at Macy's buy it. Exactly. You know, you know? it's incredible stuff. So anyway, uh, I know we talked about obviously Paddock today, and and you know we're not really gonna get too much better than a Paddock Calatrava. Of um, course, but we're also talking about ten thousand dollars, which is three thousand dollars, and what the difference is there. And the truth is, uh, these watches are, are very different. They're very different, but they, in my opinion, would deliver the equal amount of like street cred and respect. All of these watches, uh, oh, yeah. all elegant and all just for people who are actually interested in the world of watches in a serious way, yep. right? Yeah. Uh, and frankly, I think that the proportions on these things, the wearing them, just it just wears so well. It wears perfect, yeah. I wear dress watches or dress watches constantly. And I, all these watches, I've had them, I've got them suited up basically on a casual way. Yeah. And none of them are on alligator or crocodile. They're all pretty casual. So. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. all of these watches are available in the Theon House watch shop. Again, we make a joke out of it, but I do curate that shop. Uh, I'm the one that goes out and finds these and buys these and, and has them serviced. I don't service them personally, but I have them serviced. And yep. and uh, and I've been doing it for eight years now. And I love it very much. And um, I just want to uh, want to engage you guys constantly on it. Uh, shoot me an email anytime at info at theonharris.com to talk about any watches. We also do trades. Um, so that's it. Head on over to the Theon Harris watch shop and uh, check out some watch porn. Maybe mm -hmm. grab a strap while you're at it. Maybe grab a strap while you're at it. Show Check out the selection. Dune. Brand Boom. new one. Zodiac and no. Doxa. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a huge Doxa guy, um, but I do love Zodiac. So, and yeah, I would choose the Zodiac over Black Bays. And look at that price. Yeah, 1500 $1, They're amazing. So who's to say, like, what do you lose? Huge Zodiac fan. With the Seawolf. Especially vintage Seawolves are insane. Well, yeah, but obviously once but, you're but comparing Seawolves, new you know. to new, forty six hundred dollars versus fifteen hundred dollars. 
What do you, what, you know, yeah, what I, I, mean? would, I would love to put that on Breitling and say, I'd like you to answer me very quickly. What is the difference between what, what is the extra $3,000 buying me? Yeah. And I'd love to see what they say. Right. Um, I don't, I'm sure it's something. I don't know what it is. I agree. Someone will say it in the comments, but right now looking at those two watches, like even from an aesthetic wise, this is personal, but I like the Seawolf. I love the Seawolf. I love Seawolf colors, is an yeah. infamous design. If you haven't researched vintage Seawolves, yep. very, very cool. Again, when I was flipping, I bought one from a something engineer where he was a diver mm. and he wore a Zodiac Seawolf That's for, cool. it was like 50 years or something like that. That's like cool. the old version. But Oh, sorry. No, no, I was going to say, even though even the bronze is very cool, I and mean, I could definitely see someone saying, okay, you know, I want to, you know, I kind of want a gold sub, I kind of want an Aquanaut, it's kind of a marriage between the two things, and it's neither, and it's Breitling. So Breitling isn't a cheap brand, there's a high level of perceived value there, I definitely look richer than if I were to purchase a Tudor, you know, yeah. or whatever. Um, so I get it, I get the appeal, I get it. Yeah. It's not, it's not for me, yep. um, but I do get it, um, Yeah. I think that definitely makes sense. Like you said, Doxa is a bit more polarizing with their designs, mm -hmm. typically just because they go for bigger watches, but... It's that case that's really famous. You know? Oh, yeah. So if we look at two watches they offer, and this is a, these are alternative dive watches with loud colors. You may hate them, but... With terrific, uh, you know, history. I mean, Doxa has been, uh, you know, a, 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 a oh. legendary dive watch, you know, for, I mean, since the, I mean, I don't I, know, 1960s? I view Doxa as just like, yeah, they, they know, just yeah. very loud dials, but utilitarian because that was for diving. Yeah. And just big sizes, uncompromising. Jacques like, Cousteau wore Doxa. Why would we make it smaller that's not functional for a dive watch? Right. You know what I mean? Yes. So this is their Sub 300, which is a carbon fiber case. A funky design, incredibly right. light. It, it's going to feel like plastic. Right. But still, they, if you're looking for something very out there, cool stuff. Mm -hmm. 42.5 millimeters, so it's a very big watch. Mm -hmm. But from lug to lug, 45 millimeters. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially... I think they said smaller than a sub, like a Rolex sub, mm. but just way, way wider. Cool watch, funky. Then we have, they brought this back. That's cool. The 600, oh, this is it's sick. amazing, I love The that. 600T. Now, this is where it gets crazy. 600 meters water resistance, 40 millimeter case size, $1,595. Oh yeah. The other one, the 300, Again, by the way, you know, is... the big difference is going to be, you know, no one's going to look at your Doxa. Right. And say, uh, oh, that's a that's a Doxa. That's a cool. It's a great doxa. watch. Right, right. A great. I love it. And if you're a watch person, they will. But if you're if you're looking to just kind of buy a little bit of clout, especially in the just a general, just average blow Joe, Joe Blow guy, he's like, that guy's got a, he's got a Breitling. I mean, that, that's yeah. that's a f***ing Breitling he's got on. That guy's you that know? guy drops cash. Yeah, yes, exactly. It, it's one of those things where if you are a watch nerd, it's like there's there's cool stuff out there. This six hundred T. With this very just super high contrast, yep. black and white looks almost cartoonish. Yep. Wild watch. Wild and that's watch. I believe it's also fully That's lube. the first like white watch I like. That's fresh. Fully white. Yeah, yeah. Love and what's fifteen hundred well sixteen hundred dollars essentially. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh yeah, it's Fantastic crazy. Six hundred meters water resistance. But yeah. That's, you're 100% right. Bright but lane. then you will spend the rest, I mean, if you care, if you do care, which I'm not saying you should, in fact, you shouldn't, but if you do care, yeah. you will be spending a considerable amount of time trying to tell people why they should care about your watch, because it is so great for the value. Yeah, and, and, and it will a Breitling, never... A Breitling speaks for itself, you yeah. know, and, yeah. and what it's really speaking is probably not all true. It's probably very inflated what people believe the watch is compared to what it is. Of course. Um, but it does speak for itself. It's 100% true. But and I do like the, I like the bronze one. It's pretty cool. Oh, that's the thing. I don't think it's an ugly watch at all. No, no, no. It's not an ugly watch. No. It's just, it's, it's just... when a cool brand releases something that is clearly meant to just, like, punch the general population. Yep. It's like, yep. oh, cool. Yeah, nice. That's yep. cool. But bronze, definitely the coolest by far. Bronze is dope. With the green. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's nasty. That's a gorgeous watch. Nasty watch. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. What do you think? I think that's it. That's it? That's all she wrote. Really nice to see you, man. Hey, good to see you, too. Uh, pleasure. Oh. I guess I won't see you until... Uh, Business. Bit... As opposed to French. friendship. It's an old Michael oh, Lange joke. You know, I f can't believe I forgot I was going to have it be the beginning of this. Abraham Lincoln. He got shot in the head. Crazy. <laughs> well, how weird. Well, how French. How crazy. How weird. How French. <laughs> Chris and I went to an event. And we have no place at most events. But I got wrecked. The thing that we were joking about was just someone said, that's crazy. And Christian goes, that's so weird. I was like, oh, how fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sh Anyways, yeah, you're going. Uh, I'm going away.
Yep. I'm going to be in uh, Positano for... Uh, no, I'm going to be in Positano for a while, and uh, I don't know, I'll be working, don't worry. He's always working. I'm always working, baby. 